I'm Kevin Maxwell with uh, Maxwell Home Inspections and uh, the company's been around for four years and we do home inspections as well as we also do mold assessments. I'm from Hudson, New York, which is near Catskill because a lot of people don't know where Hudson is. <laughs> there was a lot of different things uh, in Hudson that I liked. I liked the fact that everything was close, so it was legitimately a small town, but it was cool because you didn't really have to go too far away to get what you needed. I played football for Hudson High. I was actually was a lineman. And, you know, for me, I, I was never really a sports um, type of a guy. But, you know, I took a, the leap and I actually jumped into playing uh, football. And to be honest with you, I really liked it because it helped me to really understand what it meant to be a team, as well as it, you know, it taught me how to take a hit. Graduated at 18. And at that point, I still was kind of looking for direction in my life. And the thing about it was is that, again, I wanted to be a police officer because I felt like it was going to be, um, I felt, like, I felt like it was gonna be able to complete me in the sense of the fact that I was gonna be able to really, um, you know, make a change. He was very active. He used to play sports in Hudson for, for the Little League. And after when he graduated, I said, what did you wanna do? He wasn't really sure, but he said he wanted to go to college. The bigger one didn't really want it to go. But I said, as long as somebody go, I will work hard and try to help him out. I went to school um, to Hudson Valley after college in Troy, and I went for criminal justice. And again, wanted to be a you know police officer slash detective, anything in law enforcement. Kevin was actually, I think he was probably a sophomore in college. Um, he's two years younger than me, so he was in college, um, and he was actually pursuing a career in criminal justice. Um, we both were. We went to school for criminal justice, but he wanted to become a police officer. So at the time, he was actually doing security. When I did that, I actually uh, got a job at Target. I pushed carts. And then after that, I actually became a security guard. And I did that in hopes that it would actually have led me to be a police officer. And kind of fast forwarding a little bit, I actually took uh, the Vermont State Police exam. And I was actually like so close to being a state trooper. But, you know, everything kind of worked out, um, you know, for the better because uh, in the midst of all that, I was taking civil service exams. And again, my interest of construction was always kind of still there. Um, it was on the kind of background. So I took an exam to be a building inspector uh, and or code enforcement official for the city of Albany. And I actually, um, you know, got the job there. So me doing that kind of springboarded me into, um, you know, the, the home inspection field um, because, again, I was, you know, inspecting, uh, you know, codes and pretty much yeah, helping people with life safety issues. I did kind of complete a part of me in the sense that I was actually, you know, playing a role in the community and I was actually working hand in hand with the um, Albany police. Uh, so I think I was about there, I was there for a couple years. Yeah, so a couple years, so I'd say maybe like two to three years. And, you know, it's funny because in that time period when I was there, um, I learned so much and it actually went by so fast. At that time when I actually was working there, um, when I actually, I went to code enforcement school and I remember one of the uh, building inspectors for Chatham, he actually, um, he, he actually was a home inspector at the time. So I remember, I was like, what is a home inspector? You know, cause I, I know that there were, you know, building inspectors that actually inspected places for uh, municipalities, but I didn't know what a home inspector was. I, I you know, I, I got from the name that, you know, they inspect residential property, but I didn't really understand it all the way. So. Um, I asked him, I said, you know, what do you do, man? And he, he pretty much told me, hey, you know, I, I inspect uh, properties where people are buying and selling. And I was like, that's awesome. So we, we talked about it more. And I says, wow, like, I feel like that really makes um, a direct impact on people's lives. And, you know, when I was actually working for the building department, I knew that every day I made an impact. And I knew that 
um, you know, I effectuated change in the sense of responding to calls and, and, and being able to help people. But at the same time, I didn't know that I could actually start a business. And for me, I felt like um, any day now, because I'm the head person where I'm always thinking about what's next. So for me, it was like, it was either I stay here and I continue to you know, do a good job and do things of that nature, or I take the leap and I actually work for myself and I can actually you know, make my own schedule and things of those nature. So you know, with that being said, it was definitely something that was nervous or nerve wracking to me. Um, but <clears throat> you know, for what it's worth, at the time, I said, you know what, I'm gonna take the leap. So I actually ended up sitting down with, you know, with my supervisor and things of that nature. And I told them you know, that, hey, I'm actually gonna you know, follow a different, uh, different path. And you know, with me leaving, it was definitely at a crazy time because I was actually buying my first house at the time. So there was a lot of things going on and there was a lot of stress kind of uh, happening, but I really believed in myself and I believed that um, I can make it happen. He was working with someone in particular who was doing home inspections on the side. So he had an opportunity to speak with him and learn from him about home inspections and what it meant to be a home inspector. And it piqued his interest probably a year into doing code enforcement. And um, he started going to the home inspections with him and learning all this. And he really realized at that moment that he just loved the fact that he could interact with so many different people. And he got to see all these cool houses and got to expect these places for them. And he felt like it was something he should do. Um, so I believe two years into code enforcement, um, he had an opportunity to pursue it full time and he, he killed it. I mean, even before he started it, he was going out, reaching out to real estate agents for like a year and just preparing for that buildup. So when he launched himself, it blew up so crazily. And you would think like, oh, this is going to be a slow start because any person who builds a business, it's going to be slow. Not for Kevin. It really picked up fast for him. I'm really proud of him actually for it. All right, so this is really interesting. We were talking about this the other day. We were like literally sitting like right here and he just looked over at me and I looked at him. What's up? He said, you know, I might go for a jog and just put on his shoes and he ran out the door. And I'm just like, what just happened? And then all of a sudden, after that, he started just exercising. He started going to school. Then he's like, you know, I'm gonna go to church. And then he ends up getting married and then graduating from school and then starting his business. And I'm just like, I don't know what just happened that day on that couch, but everything just flipped over like right away. I was always um, a very relentless person. And I've, I was always passionate about whatever I'm involved in. So if I was working as a car attendant, I'd be the best car attendant. If I was working as uh, a security guard or whatever my past professions, I always took things to the next level and I always had almost like a, a freakish desire to succeed. So for me, um, before I even left, I was already marketing my business to some extent and I was already meeting with people and, 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 and really uh, pushing you know, myself. So I was already kind of building a reputation um, for you know, what you know, Maxwell Home Inspections does. So you know, with that being said, um, <clears throat> you know, the first client experience uh, I think it came from a real estate agent. I don't remember which one it was. And you know, it was, it was definitely a, uh, an interesting experience because prior to me actually doing my first inspection, um, I had a lot of different mentors in the field that actually took me on inspections with them. And they actually really showed me the ropes of how to actually be um, a successful home inspector and also to be um, you know, knowledgeable in terms of my craft. I always say you almost have to be a little bit crazy to start a business just because um, you're really envisioning something that's not even there. Like you're creating something out of thin air, which is a business. And obviously it's something that you have to love within your heart because it's legitimately like a baby. So for me, it was like um, starting this business, it was everything to me and it still is everything to me. And you know, when I first started it, you know, I wanted to make sure it was successful. Like I looked at starting a business is almost like um, a rocket taking off. Like if you think about it, before it takes off, it needs an immense amount of fuel, an immense amount of work, and a lot of things that have to you know, take place before you can even you know, lift off. So for me, I thought about it like that and I said, you know what, if I have to work 12 hour days or you know, long days and just you know, put like, a lot of grind into it, I wanna make it happen because I wanna succeed and I wanna make this thing um, possible. So for me, uh, it was everything and it was all I, all I thought about, all I ate, you know, when I slept about it, I dreamed about it, 
Um, and it was one of those things to where I felt like if this was gonna succeed, it was contingent on me. If it was gonna fail, it was also contingent on me. So I had a choice to succeed or fail. You know, it was a lot of emotions. Um, to be honest with you, it was, it was emotions of fear, <laughs> um, a little bit of anxiety, and then also um, of joy and being proud. You know, it was fear in the sense of, is this actually gonna work? And it was joy in the sense of, I'm doing something that I've always wanted to do. And it was anxiety in the sense of, is it gonna work? <laughs> so it kind of like, it was like a, almost like a pinball or like a, like a ping pong ball in the sense of, I was kind of going back and forth in my head. It was just the right decision. Yeah, it was the right decision. And I was kind of really having a conversation with myself um, in regards to if I'm really serious about what I'm doing. And ultimately it was something that I said, you know what, I am serious about it. The Maxwell name itself is very important to me just because uh, my mom, uh, Drusilla Maxwell, she always worked hard. So my mom, um, she's a CNA and you know she worked two jobs when I was younger and for me, I've always seen her work hard to be able to help people and she never complained. She never said anything negative. It was always um, you know, a positive word of affirmation that she said. So for me, I took her work ethic into account to that. And <clears throat> when I put the Maxwell Home Inspection shirt on, I'm thinking about uh, my mom, thinking about um, you know, my family as well, um, in the sense that you know, when someone's buying a house, I wanna make sure that there's no surprises. I wanna make sure that when they move into that house, everything that um, could go wrong or, or, or that could have happened, you know, we discussed that prior to, so they, they're fully aware of the situation and they can actually bring their family, friends, kids into a safe environment. And I think that's the reason why, um, you know, we scaled up so quick because, you know, my work ethic was unparalleled to some extent, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to empower other people around me. And that's the reason why, you know, I have, you know, other inspectors and people who actually, you know, work with me because they have the same vision. And I feel like really what it is, it's about having, um, you know, people who are like-minded around you that can also share your vision. Every time you talk to Kevin or he come to visit me, he always say, mommy, I'm going to do this. Mommy, I'm going to do that. I said, why don't you pick something and major in it? And he always want to go on to always do something. And then he said, I'm going to do home inspection. And I said, why would you want to do a thing like that? You didn't go to school for that. He said, I think that's my call and I want to do that. So he, he started an adventure into it and he, he seems to be doing very well with it. He has a good relationship with everybody in Hudson and out of Hudson. He live in Albany now, but they still allow him to come into Hudson and work in Hudson because he grew up in Hudson. So he's well known in the community. I would say the biggest challenge uh, honestly was just uh, the direction. Because, you know, I knew that I wanted to help, you know, first time home buyers and people in general uh, when they're buying a house to ensure that they understand about their purchase. Um, but for me, it was how do I map um, my journey and how do I create a customer experience um, that is uh, exceptional from start to finish? So over time, um, I had to really um, build the infrastructure and the systems, um, you know, from, from scratch. Because, you know, doing inspection, I don't want to say it's easy, but I understand uh, the construction. But, you know, the other side of it is actually running the business side of it. So that's something I've always been interested in. But at the same time, it comes with a lot of different implications of, you know, um, uh, bookkeeping and taxes and, you know, uh, marketing and a lot of different things that kind of play the part um, that are behind the scenes in terms of the mechanics. Um, there's a lot of other inspectors that are uh, in this industry and, you know, I respect them all. Uh, the biggest thing about it was is how do I actually position myself to be a part of uh, that, you know, top tier, um, you know, home inspection, you know, company. So, you know, with that being said, through the marketing and through the advertising and through just, you know, doing a good job on every inspection, um, you know, we've positioned ourselves to be up there, but also um, how do I be able to delegate, you know? Because for me it was, you know, I was doing great and we were doing a number of inspections and, you know, the, the work days continued to get longer and longer and longer as we continued to scale up. So for me was, how do I, how do I have people who have the same passion, the same drive, and the same vision as me. So, you know, with that being said, um, it was a very nervous thing 
to hire people. But, you know, as we kind of um, built the business, um, you know, through um, processes and trials, um, you know, I was able to hire people who are like minded like me and were able to actually do that much more volume and have people that we can actually, um, you know, be able to serve, you know, the people. Because the thing about it is, is that when you offer a great service, um, people start talking and if they're talking good things about you. You're going to have more people that actually want to do business with you. But there's only so many hours in a day. And there's only so much of me that can go around. So how do I, how do I um, you know, duplicate or replicate myself? And that was by finding people who actually you know, had the same drive and passion for me of, of helping you know, uh, home buyers. One thing I can say that is so different about Kevin in comparison to just any other person will just narrow it down in a home inspection business. He looks for the different avenues in this realm of real estate and home inspections that haven't been touched yet you know you would think that you would think that in 2020 you would touch social media as your marketing avenue for this stuff and it wasn't and he realized that and he took that and he used it with everything that he had um, and that really helped build his business a lot he marketed on Facebook Instagram MailChimp you name it and he continues to grow and it's not just in home inspections he branches out in other avenues as well so it's never just one path for him he's looking for branches to branch off into that's really going to create a corporation and that i say is a leader in itself and someone to really watch out for kevin will go out his way to do the best he can He's very trustworthy and he will do whatever he has to do when he get a job to make sure that his job counts. Kevin's pretty straightforward and he's pretty honest so he's always going to provide the best possible service that he can. He always really goes out of his way to try his best to help out the people that he can help out no matter what it is really. I love marketing uh, the business and I just love um, you know utilizing and leveraging all the different marketing tools out there. And I think a lot of people, they actually, that's the one part they fall short at, because not to say that, you know, me doing an inspection is not important. That obviously is the, is the lifeblood of the business. But at the same time, the marketing is, is very important too, because, you know, you can be the best home inspector and know every single component of a house. But if no one knows you exist, then really it's all in vain. So for me, it was, um, you know, learning to love um, marketing and, and, and the results and the data and the metrics and seeing how if I post something that's funny or engaging or emotional how I can get different reactions from it. How do I stay relevant? How do I stay current? Um, you know it's all about top of mind awareness. So when someone's buying a house um, and let's just say if, if, if someone knew I was an inspector and I told them one time that one time isn't gonna cut it unless they have a really good memory People have short attention spans nowadays. So many things are happening, things are moving, so you have to stay relevant. And how do you stay relevant? Um, for me, it's about social media. Um, that's the best way I leverage my time, just because I know a lot of wonderful people in the Capital District as well as Hudson Valley area. Um, and the thing about it is, is that a lot of people know me and they connect with me because I always post things that are engaging, that are funny, um, you know, just a lot of different things, whether I'm on an inspection or whether I'm, you know, giving a gift card away, just so many different things. But for me, it's how do I continue to stay um, on people's minds? So social media was, was a really big um, game changer for me because I said, you know what, I can actually speak to hundreds of people on so many different platforms and I can do it daily. I can reach out to thousands of people on a weekly basis from an email. So for me, it was like, this is awesome, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't actually have the time to always sit down with someone for coffee, which every time I did, that was great. I met a lot of great people doing that. But I said, you know what? I have to leverage my time better to be able to reach more people. Because for me, I look at, okay, if I'm having coffee with one person, that's great. But if I'm sending an email out that is very engaging, I can essentially meet thousands of people all in one time frame. For me, staying relevant is everything. To be honest with you, it was, it was a very, um, a nerve, uh, an unnerving type of uh, time for me because I, I had so much business coming in and so many people calling me that it honestly gave me anxiety because I said, how am I going to be able to continue to 
give amazing service to so many people when there's only so many hours in a day and people expect you to um, you know, do an inspection in a, timely time, in, a, in a timely manner as well as to send a report to them uh, about the house and the condition of the property in a timely manner. And again, if I'm doing uh, X amount of inspections but only have X amount of time, it just becomes a, um, it gets to the point where I, I almost felt like I was underserving people because I, I don't wanna say I was rushing, but I wanna say that I had to turn down a lot of people um, to do inspections because I was just was so busy. So, you know, with that being said, me hiring somebody was not a want, it was a need uh, to ensure the business was gonna continue to, you know what I mean, move smoothly. To kind of backtrack a little bit, um, I feel like having a business is all about stepping out of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable in your business, I personally feel that you're not doing it right. And I know that's kind of like a sharp statement to say, but I feel like, you know, if you're running a successful business, it pulls certain things out of you. You know what I'm saying? So it pulls you in a certain direction that you may not have went into. You may invest a certain amount of money, and especially if you're talking about hiring somebody, that's a commitment. I can't just, if, if I don't have an inspection or a client um, for a week, um, I can't just say, hey, <laughs> you're not getting paid this week. You know what I'm saying? I have to um, you know, meet my end of the bargain every day, and I have to continue to um, you know, train this person and, and, and do things like that. So to kind of fast forward, with me hiring my first employee, um, that's another reason why you know me having a business consult was a good thing because you know I spoke to Brittany and I says, hey, I want to hire somebody, and she's like, that's awesome, let's do it. I'm like, well, where do I start? She's like, well, we actually have to you know look into contracts and things like that, payroll, you know, a lot of things that I was not well versed in. That's kind of like out of my wheelhouse. I could do a great inspection, but I don't know anything about payroll. So you know, with that being said. Uh, Brittany actually um, did the searching for the candidate and she, she actually found somebody who was a perfect fit for the job. And you know, we did an interview, we sat down, we had a conversation and we connected. Our visions were aligned and I hired him, I pulled the trigger. And again, it was a very um, unnerving process because um, I never hired anybody before. I never had anybody that I knew that hired anybody before. So I was a pioneer, you know what I'm saying? So you know, with that being said, I went to Uncharted Waters but I really do believe as an entrepreneur um, and as a business owner, you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to do certain things that maybe you, you know, you'd be a little uncomfortable with because you know, it's in that uncomfortability is where the growth happens. So for me, you know, hiring my first employee, at first it was a little turbulent in the sense of me creating certain processes and procedures and fitting this person in, but you know, kind of working my way through it, it actually became better because I had more hands helping me, you know, roll the ship. You know what I'm saying? I've heard some entrepreneurs say um, that entrepreneurs will never actually achieve balance. But then I've heard other people say they need balance. So again, it's one of those things where I feel like in my mind, is balance a thing? But I'm more towards balance. And when I first started my business, um, to be honest with you, I had no balance. I just, you know, I was working to survive, um, to make sure that this, act, this dream was a reality. Um, and once it became a reality, I actually took a step back and I said, I actually have to, um, I can't just prioritize my business above everything. It has to be in descending order. So like, you know, my faith and, you know, my family, all those things come and come aligned because, you know, if I'm not actually um, in tune with my faith, if I'm not in tune with uh, my family, then was it really all worth it? And am I actually going to be a good entrepreneur slash inspector if all that is in shambles. Because I feel like that actually helps fill me up to be able to actually pour into other people and do a good job. So again, um, if we're talking about balance, um, balance is very important to me. Um, it's something that I, I'm consistently and constantly working on and I'm, I'm not perfect at it, but I do feel like I'm better at it. And I feel like as I'm continuing to scale up my business, I'm continuing to have other people do certain things. Like before I answered every single phone call that came my way, um, now I have an office manager. So now she answers the bulk of the phone calls, takes the appointments, helps us with that, as well as my website can take appointments. So then that's one thing. Then also, before I did the bookkeeping, I did you know, a lot of the operation stuff. So then you know, I had Brittany, so you know, she helps with a lot of that stuff. And then I did every inspection, and I did every report. So now I have you know, two inspectors that are now working for me and we're actually getting to the point where uh, they're gonna be actually out in the field fully doing inspections um, independently. 
So that's actually, I'm really excited about that. But for right now, a lot of times, you know, they may do uh, reports and things like that and I review it, send it out. So for me, I, I, I feel like uh, being an entrepreneur, um, at first it was about making um, a living and making a lot of money. But with that being said, um, after I actually succeeded and I actually got a certain amount of money and, and um, things like that, for me, it was buying my time back. You know what I'm saying? So it was about actually having the money, but then at the same time, employing people to actually be able to help me to be able to get my time back so I can actually spend more time with my family or be at my church and things of that nature. So, you know, all in all, balance is important. And I think that every entrepreneur should understand that self-care is essential because if you're not taking care of yourself and if you're not actually um, doing things that are actually filling you up, then you're actually doing a disservice to your clients.